Doc, uh, first loss of the season, how do you assess the, the Brisbane game? Uh, yeah, last week um, we were we were good in parts, but overall probably just a little bit off our, our best. But often that happens when your opponent plays pretty well. So their pressure was really high. And, uh, and we probably just, there was a little period obviously in the second quarter where, um, you know, we lost our way in the contest as well. So, but overall, um, you know, while we certainly didn't enjoy winning, uh, sorry, we didn't enjoy losing, uh, the reality is, you know, it's one game and the season rolls on, you have to move on pretty quickly. So we were, we were disappointed, but um, yeah, we've, uh, we've got another big challenge this week. So we really couldn't dwell too long. Hindsight, but is it a good time to lose going to finals when you're yeah. on such a good roll? Is it a, is it a wake up call slightly? <laughs> uh, perhaps a little bit, but you know, generally the only time you start talking like that is after you've lost, and so really I, I don't buy into it in any great degree. Ultimately, um, yeah, well, all it shows you is that if you're not at your absolute best in the in the top end games, then you're going to come up short. So we just we re we learnt that lesson hopefully, um, but yeah, I'm, I don't really subscribe to the good time to lose sort of sort of theory. Sarah Allen finally coming back. How big of a boost is that? Yeah, so that's massive. Obviously, um, you know, our vice captain and uh, just such a reliable player over such a long time. Um, I guess the reality is she has, hasn't has played footy for 11 months, so we've got to be a little bit um, uh, temper our expectations to some degree. But ultimately, yeah, she's still a high-quality player. She's got through a heap of uh, heap of preparatory work in the lead-up to this, this game. Uh, and she's done absolutely everything right to make it back in, in time for the end of the season. So we're, we're wrapped for her, we're wrapped for the team. Um, and yeah, we, while we understand she may not be at her absolute best on the weekend, we're, uh, we're certainly a better team with her in it. How do you look to manage her? Is it a, a case of, of managing her minutes? Or? Yeah, no, not too much. She'll, be, she'll pretty much just play, play as per usual, with the one caveat being that she hasn't played for 11 months, as we said. So, um, But in terms of her rehab, She's ready to go. She's you know, been really thorough, really diligent, and so we, yeah, there's no no restriction from that perspective. But the yeah, we'll probably try and get her a spell each quarter, I'd imagine. Um, in her absence, you had Zoe Proust in there. How have you have you been with her season so far? Yeah, I think it's been a great uh, development year for Zoe. Um, you know, clearly she's still she's got still got some things to learn, but she's learning really quickly, and she's stepped into into what was a, an inexperienced backline and, and you know, shown that she can play at the level. So we're wrapped uh, and we hope that continues obviously through the, through the remainder of the season. But yeah, having Sarah back will you know, provide a little bit extra stability as well. Would you think that Zoe's in All-Australian contention this year? Uh, I don't know, to be honest. I'm, I'm probably the wrong person to ask. I, you know, I watch our team really closely uh, and usually the ones coming up a little bit. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't have an idea across the league, to be honest. But she's had a great season. She's been really consistent. Yeah, well, um, yeah. Once again, I haven't looked at the math exactly, but yes, it's certainly a big game. It's two v three, uh, with only a, with obviously only two rounds to go. So yeah, if we were good enough to win, then it probably does put us in that in that bracket. And yeah, any time you can play at home in front of your fans, I mean, our, our our support's outstanding in terms of across the league. Uh, so if we can generate that you know slight advantage in a final, then all the better. Um, equally, if we have to travel, so be it. You know, but uh, for Probably more for our supporters and our fans. We'd love, we'd love to play at home for sure. You spoke about that loss. Has training looked any different, or have you seen a different drive within the girls? Do you expect more from this week, just within themselves? Yeah, not, not particularly. But um, yeah, there is that sort of sense that you know, after a loss, there's going to be a response, and and you know we hope to see that. But in terms of the way they've trained, in terms of the way they're prepared, it's been pretty much business as usual. Uh, we we like to think that we train at a really high standard and high level all the time, and so. Um, in some ways, I'd be disappointed if it had changed dramatically this week. So it hasn't been much different, to be honest. I'm not sure if you've seen um, Kane comments made some um, Kane Corns made some comments about Port AFLW and about um, giving people critical feedback now and whether players can kind of handle that. Have you seen that at all? I haven't seen the comment, no. but it's a good nickname. You should no. roll with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'll maybe you can give more context, and I'll yeah. uh, I'll so try to offer a comment. If, if players don't perform, is there any fallout from that now? So I, I guess he's saying that AFLW people are kind of kinder in what they say about them as it's yeah, okay, developing. yeah. So I mean, maybe externally, um, uh, internally, it's a footy team, and uh, you know, it's a performance-based industry. So uh, internally, yeah, if you if you're not performing, then 
you kind of need to know why, otherwise you can't do anything about it. So you're kind of letting the player down if you're not providing the reasons uh, that, as you see them as the coach. So I don't think there's any difference uh, between uh, AFL, SANFL, AFLW with regard to the, the need for the feedback or the way it's delivered. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe from the media's perspective that might be the case, I can't really comment on that. Is that something that as AFLW progresses, you think you'd see more of? I know well, during an AFL season, we spent a lot of time quizzing Nixie with stuff that came Corns his head. Is that, is, is, is that <laughs> We should just invite him in, let him ask the questions. <laughs> is that, that sort of um, discourse in terms of when a player isn't performing, is that something that you know is going to happen more as the AFL progresses? Yeah, but equally, uh, it's not that... I don't see that as a big deal, to be honest. I mean, the reality is... The, Players are their, are their own harshest critics. There's very rarely that a, that a player is not performing and, you know, is oblivious to that fact. They generally are really self-aware. Perhaps overcritical at times is probably the, the, the challenge. So, yeah, while that might be something that comes to bear over time, in, in any instance in, across either, any of those competitions, once again, I don't think it's actually particularly relevant because the player themselves is usually, their harsh, as I said, their harshest critic. You try and look at last week as a blip. How how important is it to say to the girls, look, we've been playing well. That's bound to happen. Yeah, no, I think you just assess the performance in its whole in its totality. So the reality is, you know, we had a little period where we didn't play at the level in terms of our contest, and then across the course of the game, our our defence and our pressure was probably slightly down. But then there was a lot, a lot of elements in the game which we were actually really happy with. So you just you just try to assess it fairly, I think. Um, address the pieces that you're not happy with um, and and make sure you don't forget all the good stuff that you've done as well. I guess externally, we look at your season and how well you guys are going. We think of premierships and what you guys can do. Internally, is that something that you talk about? Obviously, you know you're going to play finals, but are you very week to week or is that something that you, you would have to uh, do? I think any time you're in the comp, like at the start of the season, you're trying to win. That's, that's the reality. Um, and so, yeah, you set yourself up to give yourself every, every chance to do that. But as we know, uh, unfortunately, you know, that game only comes around once, once a year. So what's, what's in front of you becomes very much the, the focus. And, but, yeah, in the long, with the longer lens, the reason you're in the competition is to try and win the competition. So why not?